the meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing. Team punishment style as we've got uh, one of the legends of the sport joining us on MMA meltdown this evening. In fact, we've got two legends of the sport joining us on the program this evening as uh, we've got the premier combat sport odds maker in the business. Joey Odessa is going to crunch some numbers with us a little bit uh, later on. We'll break down UFC fight night 52. But without further ado, uh, let's bring in a, a true pioneer, a legend uh, of the sport, a man who's going to be throwing it down November the 15th against uh, Stefan Bonner. And no doubt you've probably heard or seen some of the smack talk that's been going on leading into this. Let's welcome in the Hall of Famer, Tito Ortiz. Tito, welcome to the program. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. So, uh, Tito, uh, you know, people have obviously, you know, heard and seen a lot of the smack talk that's been going on. You know, it's, it's somewhat controversial in its own right, but we'll get to that in a moment. But has Bonner said anything to you yet that genuinely pissed you off? You're a pro. You, I understand. You guys are selling a fight. But at the same point in time, lines can sometimes be crossed. He's talked about your family. He's talking about how, like, you know, the Army troops uh, don't like you and stuff. Has anything that he said actually pissed you off for real yet? Um, I think it started uh, in the cage uh, a couple Saturday nights ago when I uh, started talking about my family. I uh, started talking about my fans. And just recently he started talking about the troops. Um, you know, th this guy just grasped him for something to grab onto. Um, yes, he did get at me, and I think in the wrong way. You know, if you want to try to ruffle my feathers, I think he did more than that. Um, it's just one of those things, uh, I'm the wrong person to do that to. You know, uh, I fight on emotions. Through my whole career, I've done that. And I think through 17 years, I never hate anybody as much as I hate this guy. And this is true hate. You know, I mean, when I fought Ken Shamrock, yeah, we disliked each other. Yeah, we got on each other's skin, but uh, nothing to this uh, magnitude. I just really, really just want to hurt the guy. I'm going to try to torture him for 15 minutes. You know, there's a lot of people, as I stated, it was kind of controversial when you guys uh, were in the cage together. We talked about it last week, and a lot of people liked it and said, hey, it's entertainment. We're trying to bring people to the sport, and it's not like these two guys aren't going to beat the crap out of each other. Yet I also spoke to some fighters that said, ah, I don't really care for that type of stuff with guys in masks and everything. What do you say to the critics about, about the, the, the altercation and the promo, so to speak, that was cut there? Um, you know, I think the way they did it was uh, very unprofessional for our sport. You know, if you're a professional wrestler, yeah, that's cool. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess you can try to hype a fight as much as possible. He's grasping on something. I mean, what has this guy really done in his career besides get his ass whooped? I mean, that's pretty much all it's been. And that's what he's known for. And it's going to happen again on uh, November 14th. I, I, I can care less about the guy. Um, I just can't wait to get in the cage to beat him down. You know, it just felt really very, very disrespectful. You know, talking the things he said about my fans, my family, uh, and then the troops, and but I think the, the hardcore fans are really uh, so disrespectful to bring the pro wrestling side of it. Like guy coming into the camp, I mean, it was it was a joke. I mean, this guy's grasping. He's a fake. He's a phony. And I'm going to show why on November 15th. What's the advantage to you to winning uh, this fight? Uh, is is it the wrestling? I look at this, and I would assume the wrestling is the difference. That you have a major advantage on the ground. Well, I, you know, I think the best advantage of everything is just crushing the face in. Um, uh, it really don't matter uh, how I win, when I win, or, you know, how the match ends. It's just I get the opportunity to punch him in his face. I dislike the guy. And this ain't a really sportsman fight to me. This is really um, time to beat up the bully. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, this guy has a loud mouth. And um, I don't know, man. I just really beside myself for just trying to cool myself down and not getting too... I'm um, emotional about things, but uh, on November 15th, I'm going to let it all go. I was talking to an odds maker, and I haven't seen any odds yet uh, for the fight. They're not posted yet, but he told me you will be favored. You're a big underdog against Slamenko, and you're a polarizing dude. You know that. you got a legion of fans, and there's a lot of haters out there as well. Are you motivated by the haters uh, at this stage when you see guys saying, oh, Tito can't beat this guy, Tito can't beat that guy, look, he's a big underdog, but then you win. Does that motivate you? I mean, you got to be driven by something at this point, Tito, right? There's got to be some sort of reason for you to be doing this right now. Is silencing the critics and the odds makers and the haters part of uh, what motivates you at this point? 
Well, you know, all those odd makers, all those haters, all those people, they don't get in the cage and they don't fight. They don't get in the gym. They don't train six days a week. You know, the people who do motivate me are my supporters, the people who have my back, my fans, people who, who watch all my fights and support me and understand what I go through as a person, as a fighter, as a father, and, uh, you know, as a man in general. Um, uh, those are guys who motivate me to get better. But for this fight, I think the person who motivated me was uh, Stephanie Botter himself. Uh, you know, he crossed the line many times, and uh, I think it's just going to get worse and worse and get more and more heated as we get closer to the fight. It's amazing to me that so many people you've been rivals with are so, you know, they're long gone from the sport, and, and here you are right now still fighting and still relevant. And people, you know, are looking forward to the card. People are talking about the fight. Yet it seems to me, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the program right now, I, I've been thinking about this, I was thinking about this recently as well. It was actually after, after the altercation um, in, in the cage in which, you know, there's a lot of, oh, you know, Tito's just trying to sell this and try to do that. And I was thinking, you know, for a guy that's accomplished everything that he has, you know, I don't think you get the respect that you deserve, but I'm thinking that sort of probably goes hand in hand with Dana White, doesn't it? In that if they're going to sort of discount you and they're going to try to erase you from the past, there's a lot of new school fans that, you know, Dana's gospel. So if Dana's going to say something, you know, one day they'll love John Fitch, but if Dana says John Fitch sucks the next day, then, oh, maybe John Fitch wasn't that good. Does that bother you that the new school legions maybe really don't know what you've accomplished in the past? And do you think that Dana White's attitude towards you is one of the reasons why? Well, you know, I think that's what it really comes down to is uh, when you go through negotiation, contract negotiation, the promoters are going to talk down on you to make you look like a piece. Um, and I've always been a threat uh, to Dana. You know, you always want to be me. You always want to be a fighter. You always want to be in the limelight. Well, he's there. Now he doesn't have to talk about me anymore, which is good. You know, I, I finally get the uh, recognition that I've been deserved my whole career. You know, I've always been the guy at the top of the sentence, um, every, every word out of his mouth. And finally, for one, uh, he stopped talking to me, which I'm very happy about. You know, I've done the same thing too. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for Lorenzo Fertitta for giving me the opportunity I had through UFC. But it was time for me to grow, and I went to Bellator, and you know, I signed a great deal, and you know, I'm, I'm competing for the fans. Uh, I want to compete. I'm healthy. My mind's straight. Everything at home is perfect. No more trauma. You know, uh, my beautiful girlfriend Amber Miller, she's just great support, and it's nice to have that when I'm uh, taking care of my uh, twin boys. What's the attitude in the Bellator locker rooms with Scott Coker running the show as opposed to Bjorn Rebney? Yeah, you're talking about, I mean, an ecstatic uh, excitement. Every one of the fighters are very, very happy. You know, uh, Scott Coker falls through in everything he does. It's just, uh, he's a straight professional. He's been doing this for such a long time. I mean, personally, I've known him for over 12, 13 years. Uh, I almost signed with Strike Force, and then USC didn't give me what I wanted, uh, and it's negotiation tactics that worked well. And it's kind of funny that just everything comes around in a circle. And Scott, we sat down and was just like, huh, finally we're working together. And I was really happy when uh, Bellator and uh, Spike TV Viacom signed Scott Croker. It's a blessing in disguise. And I think Scott Croker is really going to save the company of Bellator. I mean, you can already see with the events that they have. I mean, it's brighter, it's nicer, it looks clean, it's sharp. Um, the fights are, uh, you know, very, very exciting. And, you know, I think uh, he's just going to make the next level and really kind of catch up to uh, the UFC of how much progress they've had in MMA. Uh, Tito Ortiz uh, with us. And uh, finally, in closing, uh, Tito, uh, how much longer do you see yourself fighting? It seems like you have nine lives uh, right now, and so many <laughs> of your rivals, like I said, you fought over the years, aren't around anymore. You know, is it, you know, you take things fight by fight right now, and opponents, is there an end game right now? How much longer do you have? Well, you know, um, I, I still have... Uh, this will be one of uh, three, or actually two of four. So I have uh, two more fights after this fight. Um, I was supposed to get a title fight for this fight, but I ended up saying no because I wanted to fight Bonner because he titled Bellator. Um, after I came a face in Bonner's, or came a hole in Bonner's face, um, I'm looking for a world title shot. You know, Emmanuel Newton um, is holding the title. I'd like to get a uh, shot against him. He's a great champion and a great fighter. And uh, if I beat him, you know, I'll be one of the best in the world. Uh, Tito Ortiz with us and. Uh... You know, Tito, we had you on years ago on, on Sirius Satellite Radio. You probably don't remember, but you know, I, was, I was very impressed and I was floored because uh, you graciously gave away some, uh, some punishment gear to the listeners of the program. And once again, 
uh, Tito Ortiz is uh, giving away some uh, some gear to the viewers of the Fight Network. And you know, say what you will, but we have a lot of fighters on the program that don't uh, you know send gear and say, hey, we want to want to ship some uh, stuff up to the viewers of the network. So I'm sure a lot of uh, Tito Ortiz fans really appreciate that, Tito. Awesome, man. That's really, really cool. You know, people can check it out. Maybe you can pick some, and hopefully that's one of the things that we send at punishment.com. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, fan appreciation time to give back, and, you know, thanks for your network to uh, helping us uh, get back to the fans. Hey, well, Tino, hey, thanks for uh, for taking the time to be with us, we, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. But I guess i got to ask you to be the obligatory uh, generic uh, question here. How you feeling uh, right now? Uh, you know, I fight's feel really still a little good, ways I'm away. I'm on my way to the gym right now. Uh, I've been training uh, six days a week, you know, putting in about, you know, three to four hours a day. And it's, it's really just quality training uh, to keep my body in shape and just uh, just nipping at the bit, man. I just can't wait to get close, closer to this fight. I'll start picking up the training a little bit here in about a week or so and, uh, you know, start sparring and everything. But I'm excited to fight. My body's right. My mind's right. I just uh, want to get in the cage and really demolish uh, uh, Stephanie Bonner. Thanks for joining us, Tito. Awesome, man. I appreciate all the fans. You guys are listening. Watch this fight November 15th for free on Spike TV. Don't miss it. There's uh, Tito Ortiz uh, with us. And as I stated, uh, we kick it off with a legend of the sport. We go, uh, we'll be joined by another legend of the sport when we return. Joey Odessa will join us. We'll crunch some numbers. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. <laughs>